Now, COVID-19 has changed a lot of things in the community, and one of those things is the Boys and Girls Club. They've been affected. Um, not being able to have social gatherings is pretty much everything that they do on a daily basis. I speak to Melissa about how COVID-19 has changed the way they've had to connect with their community. Owing to the current pandemic, um, so we've been unable to run any in-person programs since the middle of March, basically. We had um, March break camp all planned out, and then unfortunately, owing to everything happening, we were unable to run March break camp. So since then, we've sort of had to uh, shut our programs down for the most part. Um, so we can't have any after-school programming. We couldn't have any of our, um, you know, ball hockey, basketball, those kind of things. So we were obviously very disappointed. Um, we understand the reasons why, but we were obviously very disappointed, as were our members. So um, we had to sort of switch to all virtual stuff. So we've been sort of over the last few months just sort of reevaluating how we could revamp summer camp. Um, in the event that we couldn't run it. Um, and so we started planning how to reach people virtually. And a lot of our programming over the spring was limited to um, Facebook crafts and videos that we would share with our members. So quite a change for us. The, um, uh, like, I mean, tons of businesses have had to totally change the way they're doing stuff. Um, was it something that they left to you guys to kind of do locally? Was it... Um, or was this something that they kind of had like a blanket thing like this is how we're going to do all these different types of, uh, of activities? Yeah, so basically at the beginning we were all sort of, you know, just trying to play it day by day because we didn't know how long this was going to last, what the impacts and implications were going to be. Um, so the Boys and Girls Club of Canada um, was really very, you know, helpful. They were on the ball and they would send us, you know, information. Um, they would share with us different resources that they and um, so they, you know, they had resources for parents. They started um, parent groups and had links for that and, and that kind of thing. So we were able to then share that on our Facebook page to keep parents connected. Um, they sort of had ideas and tidbits. They would share what other boys and girls clubs across Canada are doing to stay connected. And we could sort of share ideas that way, um, ongoing meetings with one another, just sharing ideas, sharing resources, and really trying to support each other nationally on how to move forward and what to do. And then um, jumping ahead closer to summer, the Boys and Girls Club of Canada then did our partnership with Jays Care, which is a part of the Toronto Blue Jays. And then that's where we sort of, sort of collaborated there to start um, planning and programming for virtual summer camp. Okay. Now, uh, I guess one of the big things, like uh, we talked a little, like for two seconds before the interview, um, a lot of the stuff that you guys do is inclusion and groups. And I've done some projects with the Boys and Girls Club in the past, and it's always packed. There's always tons of kids around, and they love it. Um, how has it affected? What have you? What are you hearing from the parents or the or the kids that are used to coming and being with their friends um, at this time of year? Yeah, definitely. So when we first started out um, in the spring, it was like a lot of uh, us just sort of learning, like, how, what do we do? How do we do this? Um, so we were really trying to just stay connected with those families, like sending off emails, making phone calls, checking in as much as we could. I know like our executive director, Rodina Turner, did a really good job of just trying to stay connected, trying to make those calls and trying to reach out and just saying, like, we, we understand that these are unprecedented times. What can we do to support you? Um, and at the beginning, like it was sort of a learning curve for us and it was just trying to connect on Facebook and, and that kind of thing and, you know, having those videos. But basically it would just be me talking and then hoping somebody views my, my Facebook videos. And so you just don't know, right? Like if people are, and the odd person would reach out and comment and, and that kind of thing. But it was really hard because it was a very one-sided sort of relationship and not at all what we're used to. Um, so that's where this whole partnership with Jay's Care and, and launching virtual summer camp has really been huge for us, sort of trying to get back to that connective piece and establishing those relationships because this interactive summer camp is, is through Zoom. So we can see each other. Um, we have, you know, uh, summer staff that we hired specifically to help with this. Um, and they worked with us last summer. So they're familiar with a lot of the kids. Um, they're familiar with, you know, our mission and our goals. And so it's really helped just like establish that 
connectiveness and this ability for the kids to connect with their peers in a safe way, which they haven't been able to do since March, right? Welcome back to the program. I'm going to continue on with our interview with Melissa talking about um, the different programs and things that the uh, Boys and Girls Club have on the go that you can still be a part of. Yeah, so basically, um, along with virtual summer camp, so each week for virtual summer camp, we have a different theme. And so the videos that you're seeing on Facebook directly correlate with those themes. So we're trying to stick with the theme. So even if you're not able to join us for virtual summer camp, or maybe you are, but you're looking for something to do after those 45 minute sessions, then these um, crafts correlate directly with that theme. Um, so yeah, so it's this week happens to be super sloppy science week. So it's a lot of science experiments, a lot of crafts that go along with our uh, science theme. So. Yeah, and next week um, will be really fun too. We're going to do a superhero academy sort of summer camp. So keep an eye out for crafts that are superhero themed as well. Now, people can still get involved um, with the virtual summer camps and um, any of the other programs that you guys have going on. Where can people find you guys? Where can they get their yeah. information? Of course. So um, the best way to, you know, sort of keep in touch with us daily is to like us on Facebook um, because we post a ton of information there. We share, you know, all of our ads for, for virtual summer camp. What we're doing each day is all on our Facebook page. So if you're interested in keeping up to date, that's probably the best way to keep up to date like every day. If you have a specific question or you'd like to get in touch with me about virtual summer camp or any other programs that we're looking at, you can email me. Um, or give me a call. So my email is programcoordinator.bgcpembroke at gmail.com. So maybe you can link that for them. And then my phone number is 613-559-0584. So that direct, directly contacts me, Melissa, and uh, I can register you for summer camp. I can answer your questions about summer camp um, and, you know, help you stay in touch with what we're trying to trying to do during this difficult time. Now, um, is there anything coming up that uh, maybe we should know about? I know you just mentioned that um, superhero theme is coming up next week. Um, yeah. What do we have to look forward to the next couple of weeks that maybe uh, someone may want to get a little bit of a head of the game? Yeah, for sure. So next week, like I said, we have a superhero academy. So I'm thinking, you know, superheroes in training type stuff. Mm. Um, the following week, the week of the July 27th, we have a Disney Pixar theme. So a lot of, you know, our favorite characters sort of coming to life virtually over Zoom. Um, we have a Dino Days in August. So we're exploring um, dinosaurs and all things that. Um, we have an outdoor adventure camp. So taking outdoor adventure-esque and bringing it virtually. Um, we have a space exploration camp, which is always really fun. And we have a sports fanatics at the end of the at the end of the summer. So a lot of exciting, fun programming coming your way virtually um, and on Facebook. So keep an eye out for that. In the fall, I know there's still a lot of uncertainty about what school is going to look like. We haven't really officially gotten any word. There's a lot of speculation on what back to school could look like. Um, in the event that kids are unable to attend school every day, we are looking, if we're able to, and we're hoping we will be by that time, have kids in our care on the days that they cannot attend school. So it would be like some, similar to what our PA days look like in the past, right. but it would be during those days where they can't be in school. Um, and we would, you know, help them with their homework and their, and their you know, their that side of their school, um, but also still have some fun and activities uh, going on that we're, you know, used to seeing. Thanks, Melissa, for that fantastic interview. Um, always a pleasure to talk to the Boys and Girls Club here in Pembroke. They do great things. 